All right, welcome. This is the uh, 24th episode. Uh, chiming in now with amazing content for you. Um, we have a lot in store for you as the uh, season's now coming to an end for the first PGR. Uh, it's going to be something that we're going to roll out here this month and then uh, feature as much as we can as the season's ended. We have all these events to showcase and players to celebrate. Um, but it's been a long time since we've been on the show. Uh, we being myself and Kony. Kony's currently in Australia, so he won't be joining us. So, hi, my name is Swar. I'm from PG Stats, Panda Global. You know the whole deal. Uh, we're going to go into a pretty jam packed episode featuring yours truly, covering CEO Albion, uh, the closure of the PGR, as well as the situation that unfolded last week uh, with top players Ally from Canada and Captain Zach from the Southeast United States. But before that, if you're tuning in for the first time on Twitch, welcome to the chat. We're going to have live Q&A at the end. So please uh, let us know any questions you have by tagging us. You might have a chance to have it featured. And if you're looking at us through YouTube for the first time, then just go ahead and uh, hit the like and subscribe button so you can stay tuned to the latest and smash ultimate news, recap, controversies, and more. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, the bit of coverage that we have on the past weeks as we had two A tiers pretty much punctuate the end of the PGR, the first PGR that we have for Ultimate. So right off the bat, we had a couple things looking at Florida with CEO 2019. We had this tournament actually in Daytona and Daytona Beach was the subject of a lot of criticism from last year. CEO was an event that started in Orlando. A lot of the locals gave some issues to some of the players, some of the attendees, but regardless of that, there were some results that we do wanna highlight because this of course was the last North American A tier event slash major for the entire season. We had over a thousand players enter with a 1,164 to be exact. Uh, it met the A tier mark, but not the S tier, like I said before. And we had, of course, Echo Fox, MVGs, MK Leo take the entire thing. But Mars put up a fight from Panda Global with his trademark zero suit. And then, of course, we had the rest of the top four with Ally scoring third, DeBuzz scoring fourth. Uh, and then we had a really incredible breakout performance by Pape, the Pokemon trainer from MDVA, previous Sheik main in Smash 4, who actually got fifth at the event. Followed by that, we had Solari's Gluttony, who won Albion the next week, surprise, surprise, uh, with his Wario up in top eight, followed by Wadi and Nairo tying for seventh. This was something that a lot of people didn't see coming necessarily um, from some of these players, only because they had just recently started out um, really getting into the top eights, talking, of course, about Pape and Gluttony. Uh, Gluttony has done incredibly in uh, Europe, but of course, here in North America, it's a different story, as of course, there's uh, differences in the meta, in the characters that are shown, and um, everything else that's very non European. Uh, the event featured uh, an incredible set between all the players described above, and of course, Grand Finals was, was between MKLeo and Mars. This was something that um, Many people didn't see uh, on the horizon. Mars, of course, bringing us incredible, incredible explosive gameplay. And um, we saw a lot of that throughout the entirety of the CEO Grand Finals. Uh, CEO 2019, of course, being a A tier, will garner many, many points uh, for the rankings now as it closes this past weekend. And it will be something that many people will be looking forward to next year when it comes to CO 2020. Uh, we'll see if the event stays in Daytona or maybe it's going to move uh, back to Orlando. But in any case, congratulations to MK Leo for winning that event. That's going to be uh, another first for the fellow um, previous PGRV5, PGR, um, you know, number one player in everyone's mind. Uh, we're going to see how that shakes out, but no surprises there probably. Uh, but let's jump into Albion 4, which happened across the pond in England. So in England, we had Albion 4. This was the fourth in the series uh, by uh, the DAT team. This is a series thrown up by Europe's Best, and it features an incredible array of talent from Europe, as well as some international stars that actually made it, such as MVD, uh, Raito, and DeBuzz. Uh, Mr. R was, of course, defending the homeland with his uh, partner in crime, Gluttony. Gluttony won the entire thing, followed by DeBuzz in second, Raito in third, SCR7 in fourth, MVD in fifth, Mr. R in fifth, Young Eevee in seventh, tying with S1, two European players that you definitely want to keep an eye out for. Uh, Gluttony himself was uh, pretty much in grand finals, 
back against the wall. He got reset against the buzz, and then he took the entire thing after uh, very close games. He took it with Wario, which was something that nobody has done before at an A tier. Um, at that caliber in Europe, although Tweak has been doing a lot of work with Wario here in the States. Uh, but for Gluttony, this was huge. In Smash 4, Mr. R, of course, led the forefront of the European metagame by being in the States and taking what he learned here and then dominating all of Europe. We sort of see these tides turn, and we're seeing Gluttony actually opening up to being uh, the pretty much prime defender slash representative of Europe right now, especially considering the fact that he topped eight at CEO the week prior, and then he won Albion 4, two A tiers nonetheless. Uh, it spells pretty good um, for Gluttony, not just in rankings, but in publicity and everything else. So his seating will probably benefit from that uh, incredibly for uh, Evo, assuming that he goes. And for everybody else involved in the tournament, the Buzz had a spectacular showing, MVD as well. Uh, Americans that tried to take it all in front of Europe, but Europe defended and they countered. So that'll pretty much be the coverage for both the tournaments that we had. Uh, these tournaments are, again, the season ender for the entire PGR for Ultimate. We had an incredible list of over 80 tournaments, and these two were the last to sort of cap it for both Europe and the United States and the scene as a whole. There were some other tournaments that happened in and around the weekend, a couple C tiers, uh, but those are of course not gonna count as much as these A tiers. So without further ado, we also have just how the season's ending. Uh, as I mentioned on my personal account on Twitter, um, there's the X Factor survey that's gonna be released pretty soon. And then we're also going to have um, a couple of announcements lined up for you this week that you can, of course, uh, stay tuned for and see what it's all about. I mean, X Factor makes a return uh, to the surprise of pretty much nobody. And uh, we have a new spin on it this time that we're going to show later. Um, but as you can see here on Twitter, we pretty much opened it up so that people can apply and then uh, have a chance to be featured. Uh, this, of course, is comparing the ranking that they actually objectively get through the algorithm to the community's perception of these players. Uh, this you can find on the PG Stats account page, and you're going to see more of that as the season sort of rolls on um, into the next one, or sorry, ends in this gap week. Uh, we're going to have the X Factor featured on the same player cards that you've seen before, on the same format. Um, but this time, of course, with so many people being available to potentially participate in it, we're asking that these applications be followed by uh, PGR players from the past, anyone who's TO'd an S or A tier in the past before, and people who have commentated top 8s at A tiers and top 16s at S tiers. And of course, any seeders that helped in those events, people that have helped in uh, EVO before, people that have helped before uh, in CEO bring those together. It's just important to make sure they're included and have their voices heard. Uh, so you'll see more of that and uh, the application looks like it does here. Just really quick, what's your qualification? Can you name specific um, instances in which this was, you know, something you were involved in, your tag and email? Not going to bother you with that, uh, you know, aside from, you know, everything listed here. So yeah, if you want to get involved in the X Factor, make sure to hit us up on that application, which is now on the PG Stats account, my personal account, and we'll have it out there. We'll get it to you as fast as we can. Release dates for the PGR are pending as we tidy everything up and just get it all prepared for public release. Uh, expect it before EVO is what I'll say and uh, get ready for the ride. So in closing, we have one more piece. This is something that unfolded last week and this is something of course that uh, has brought the community into quite the divide and that's of course uh, the ally and Captain Zack situation slash controversy that unfolded late last week slash post CEO. Um, as you can see here, many, many outlets covered this controversy. Uh, Smash Pro Ally retires after admitting to lying about dating a 16 year old. And you can see the tweets there as many people have now seen it for themselves on Smash Twitter. Um, many of these outlets also covered the fact that uh, Ally had admitted to it and Captain Zach had posted about these tweets on his own account. And you'll see that a lot of these things are now just public knowledge and it's something that we then made a statement on the account ourselves for PG Stats. Uh, we said, in light of recent allegations, PG Stats will undergo an internal review to evaluate omitting ally from the upcoming PGRU. In the event that a player is omitted from the ranking, sets against the player will still count in the ranking algorithm. So in short, following any decisions that we make on the matter, if ally were to be omitted, the sets that count against him from people that have gotten it throughout the entire season will not be punished. Those will be awarded to them. It would just simply be a literal omission from the Hall of Fame that is the PGR 
you. Uh, decisions are still being made, a lot is still being researched, but for the most part, what I can promise you is that we're going to be as thorough as possible and keep to the standards that our publishers allow us to keep and um, work to the best that we can for the community, which we've done time and time over each season. So that's my pro personal promise to you. But apart from that, it is, of course, a very unfortunate set of events. Uh, wishing the best for everyone involved, since, of course, this is a very traumatic situation that the community needs to embrace and uh, see to it that it ends correctly um, for everybody involved. But for the most part, PG says is going to go ahead and continue with the ranking closure as it has now for ever since Albion ended this past weekend. So apart from that, I just wanted you to sort of hear that for myself, uh, hear it from Smash Center now. And um, we're going to go ahead and open up to a little bit of Q&A. The situation, of course, with Ally and Zach is ongoing slash kind of closed slash things might pop up. So we're keeping our ears and eyes open for anything new that might come about. But for the most part, right now, uh, we're still internally reviewing and that decision will come out, of course, with the PGRU, which is set to happen before EVO. So we're going to roll it into, since this is the solo show, solo segment, we're going to roll it into a little bit of Q&A so people can have any last minute questions that they might have. Uh, still pending about the PGR, whether it be this PGR or next PGR. I will say right now that um, as far as the next PGR goes, we're going to release a TTS as soon as we can. Events that are happening from now into um, the next season are, of course, going to count. The second season started this past weekend, right, with Albion being the last one. And then this next weekend coming up is going to feature a ton of events feature people have been talking about before. Um, but for right now, we're going to keep things as is. Uh, we're going to keep news steady, but just know that before EVO, pretty much, we're going to be talking about a completely new game when it comes to top players, personalities, and everything else. Um, so going to go ahead and go to the chat section now to see what people have asking. Um, sorry for sort of like the shuffling of all this, doing it um, by myself today. We'll just be, you know, no Coney. So... Uh, Coney would join us at this point, but of course he's not here. Uh, so yeah, any questions that you have, please uh, put it in the chat, tag us so I can read it and answer it. I'm taking probably questions that you know are related to the topic. Uh, relating anything to the alley situation, I pretty much said everything I could say um, in this instance. But of course, uh, just let me know what else you might have planned. So let's see here, what do people have? So. Uh, now that we're going into the Q&A section, a couple people have a couple questions that I'm reading now. All right, so first question from Pepe XPD, Pana Global. How many people in the PGR? There's always 50. Uh, that's a tradition that we've kept um, from the beginning when we started the whole thing. Uh, we think that 50 is just like that number that... Um, pretty much not only <laughs> balance as well, but it's also something that um, we found through a lot of years of research that, <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't mean to make that reference. Uh, after literal years of research from doing PGRs, we found that after 50, things get so muddled and the distinction between 51, 53, 55 is very slim, very muddled. Uh, ties between 17, 25th and 33rd at many events just doesn't really amount into anything that you can really um deduce who's over who and then of course once you get into the 60s 70s and 80s it's a different story so as you can see here uh this is the past pgr pgr v4 for smash 4 um expect a uh, similar production but a lot different um we've been working hard to make sure it's as best as it can be but for the most part uh 50 people and of course area 51 will make a return no spoilers there area 51 is uh an idea i came up with actually where uh, five people are showed up as honorable mentions and they're all sort of 51. So for all intents and purposes, when they're talking, they're just like in that HM category. None of them are 51st by themselves, but as a group, they just kind of make up what we know as Area 51. Uh, other question, Fire Yams. Any plan changes to the minimum required entrance slash international modifiers for qualifying tournaments going forward? Uh, great question, Fire Yams. This season we featured actually in the TTS, if I can show it here, um we featured on um, that's not it um we featured the international multiplier and as you can see here uh if an event was not in the continental united states such as australia or japan 
Uh, they received a slight bump for their points. Uh, you can see here the continental US had a 200 minimum for C tier status, while international tournaments had a 160. Now, Soir, why are all these international uh, events getting buffed? That seems so unfair. 40 people are, you know, of course, going to make a difference. Now, uh, naysayer, what I will say is that after researching this tournament, uh, this season, and looking at all the points garnered um, by all the events, uh, the U.S. alone, I'll just say this now, the U.S. alone had the majority of the points, like majority, over 50% of the points went to just the U.S. So that means that if you weren't in the U.S., you were competing against Canada, Mexico, uh, Japan, the entire continent of Europe, um, and anywhere else that decided to have a Smash tournament for the remainder of what the U.S. didn't claim. Um, so if anything, there's an argument to even make it higher, but we're going to keep it around the same, I believe. Uh, the entrant count for C tier cutoffs will probably stay at 200. Don't want to make any promises, but I think that was a really good number for everybody involved. I think there were over 60 C tier events this season, which is kind of wild. Um, if we actually look here, there were five S tiers, six A tiers, nine B tiers. And if we look at all these Cs, you're going to get 64. So. Um, with that alone, you have a pretty big, hefty majority going to non-US, and even though the multiplier was for non-continental, um, they still benefited greatly. So yeah, probably won't change, and it'll probably be the interim TTS will feature uh, the, what's it called? The, T the TTS will feature only entrance. Once the whole PGR comes over, then we'll go ahead and also add the... Um, segment where pgr player points are counted and then that concentration obviously gets crazy with like top 10 and top 5 all mattering differently um let's see another question fire blaster 65 what did you enjoy from the voices of smash this season what do you want to see from commentary and what will help those looking to get better and improve wow that's a very specific question um so commentary this uh Let's see. So personally, in my opinion, um, I mute most commentary that I see on stream, it, like regardless of who it is, whether it's top eight or top 16 or pools. I never listen to commentary when it's in pools. Uh, I don't stand to benefit from it personally. And many people that are placed into those ranks typically um, have a hard time. I mean, you're, you're commentating like round one Joe versus Seagull Joe. So Seagull Joe claps them like he did at me, uh, Pound 2019, and you're just commentating a slaughter fest, which <laughs> is pretty one-sided. Um, but for everything else that matters, uh, I think that right now a lot of people are still in the learning stages. I think a lot of people came in assuming they would just know or be naturally um, prepared to do commentary for Ultimate just because they did some Smash 4 commentary. And it hasn't really redeemed anyone, I don't think. Um, I think that the greats are still the greats, the mediums are still the mediums, and the forgettables are still kind of forgettable, which is probably awful to say, but um, being pretty honest. I think that commentary as a whole in Smash has now shifted from trying to go full esports to now full personable. What I mean by that is I think the only sort of esports-esque uh, tone that you can really have on commentary at Smash events is at most like Suarez bar if you remember that from <laughs> uh 2ggc like something where it's kind of tongue-in-cheek but also it's bringing in facts but like heavy editing goofy stuff like that um i think anything like an analyst desk and uh button-up commentary uh is just not hitting the mark i think that we stopped appealing to uh the esports world as a whole for a while now and we're leaning more into our own personalities and i think um, we're starting to see that really shine through, which um, I think is good because people are now stop like they're stopping the whole pretending act and getting into like who they are and getting more comfortable and by that more fluid. So I think what I'm waiting to really see next year is, um, you know, people being more, I mean, it happens every season, but, you know, accountability, just like owning up like, hey, I messed this up, you know, hey, this, you know, whatever, not taking Twitter or Twitch personally, because it's just people reacting, right? People will be like, I don't like how this guy sounds. I don't even know who you are. So um, people trying to like kind of keep off that and focusing more on their craft is what I'd like to see. Um, 
So yeah, let's see. Uh, thank you for the questions, everybody. Make sure to just tag us, Panda Global, so I can see them. Uh, Epic Knights, let's see. Epic Knights asks, would you at any point be interested in presenting character usage data from all recorded data of PGR ranked tourneys? There are people doing similar analysis, but PGR has a lot more clout, for lack of a better word. Um, yes, we have clout. That is confirmed. Um, Main issue with that is the undertaking regarding characters stems from the Smash EG API not being um, easy to navigate. And I believe that we haven't or know anybody that's been able to extract character data from brackets. I think the best that we can do, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm probably wrong. Um, but I think something we're going to look towards doing is um, possibly get some tunes possibly uh, do like top top eight or top 16 character usage showing what's there and having people uh, sort of look at that versus an entire tournament because character data is so lackluster as it is. I think only S tiers and some A tiers for top eight to even have the characters filled. Um, but I know that Bernard's Loop, um, probably Kaniki from Reddit, um, have done some character usage exploration, but for the most part, the PGR like mains and all that, like that's that's the most we can kind of uh, showcase in a way that's like appropriate, but also intuitive. Um, IMO. So let's see. Jason GU. Uh, how will set counts be valued since past PGRs use set counts from the last PGR? Uh, good question. Everything is iterative, which is practical tasks buzzword um but basically like as the set counts stand now from the beginning where we started with let's see what was it the beginning starting with the first tournament of the season which is big win smash ultimate showdown 2 everything from big win smash ultimate showdown 2 to the pinnacle 2019 and big win championship 2 actually let's go australia um will be counted as sets and those sets are going to be measured against everybody else and those sets will be valued based on the tournaments that they have and so if i got a set over uh tweak right at an s tier that will count more versus if i got a set at over tweak at a tri-state c tier right so that will be valued and uh stacked accordingly so don't be fooled it's kind of hard to illustrate but set counts aren't exactly as what they seem like if someone's 410 and someone else is 410 those four wins and those 10 losses can vary wildly in value between the two people so we'll try our best to sort of illustrate that but you know with every season there's like confusion for the data so we're trying to simplify it each and every time to be as intuitive as possible um let's see what do these other pgrs look like i remember this one so footage you're going to see now, tripped up memory lane, PGRV5. Shoutouts to Kud, KUD, he's on Twitter, a Japanese animator that does the JPR as well, has always done incredible work. Um, OxyClean, or oxycl 3 Ian asks, when do you think Nintendo will actually recognize Smash Esports and invest in it? Hmm, great way to bring down the mood. I think that they already have acknowledged it. Investing will probably be... I don't even know. I don't even have an honest answer. Uh, I could be cynical and say never. There's no signs or evidence pointing towards them doing uh, any sort of investment, um, at least now. But they did not in Brawl, they did not in Wii U, and they did not so far in Ultimate. So I think the recognition is definitely there, but recognition doesn't pay bills. And of course, neither do Nintendo versus tweets. Um, but the visibility is important, and I think that the cross-collaboration could exist, but so far these Nintendo Open events seems to be, like these Nintendo Online Open events seem to be where they got their money at. And I think that's a great conduit slash crossover for the competitive scene. Someone sees something like that as a casual, says, oh my gosh, you can play this game competitively. Goes on Google, goes on Twitter, near a Smash tournament, they see MDV is hosting Xanadu or whatever they go, they become part of the scene. And then they're number seven on the next PGR, I don't know. but. Uh, in terms of investment, Nintendo, I mean, that's the age-old question. I wish I, I, wish I knew the answer, because <laughs> if anybody knew the answer, then we would, uh, we, would just, we would just be in a very different spot. Um, but yeah, being candid, being candid tonight. Let's see. Uh, next question. So far, keep these going. I got about, like, maybe 10 more minutes. Uh, thank you, everybody, for keeping me company. Kony, of course, lamenting the fact that he can't be here, but uh, me holding the fort down as much as I can. 
Um, so we got Arbar. Uh, are all tournaments in the same tier worth around the same in terms of points you get for placing well? For example, is Frostbite worth as much as Genesis? That's actually a great question, and I'm glad you asked that, Arbar, because the answer is no. All tournaments are weighed differently. Uh, within the same tier, there's subtle nuances, but if you look here in the TTS, uh, the actual point section, which I'm highlighting right here in column I, um, the actual point sections show, based on the entrance, of course, since this first season was only entrant count, uh, it shows how many, how many points were available to get. Uh, Genesis 6, breaking the scale basically, is almost worth double than Frostbite in terms of points available. So in this fashion, you can kind of think of tiers as the letter grade. And of course, within tiers, like there's different um, percentages as to what you know, an S plus or an S or an S minus would be. We didn't do any of that sort of delineation in the TTS because it just gets so confusing. Um, but if you go on the TTS, which is on the PG Stats Twitter account linked in a Google Excel file um, or Google Sheets file, you'll see that uh, Genesis 6 is the highest rated S tier. CEO is the highest rated A tier. Battle of BC3 is the highest rated B tier and Level Up Expo 2019 is the highest rated C tier, and respectively everything in between that. Uh, I will say that the subtle differences uh, amount to nearly nothing. I mean, even just right here, if we look, this is kind of funny. Um, but right here, you have Prime Saga and Pound like differing by one point. Uh, you have, you know, differences of like 10, 20, 30, 40, and that just kind of like, you know, it just kind of, turns into what it turns into. Um, but for the most part, like the biggest differences are gonna be like the S tiers and of course like Genesis, rightfully so, really tips the scales for people depending on what their situation is. So within each tier there's subtle differences, but I'm not gonna say that like, you know, if you sit here and you try to calculate, all right, like if I win three of these C tiers is the same as a B tier. I mean, there's so many factors to consider and honestly, it's just, you know, too crazy. It's like trying to take a picture of a hurricane in motion and every snapshot you get will be something different because of how crazy the competition is and how crazy everything else is. Um, ba -ba -ba. Let's see. Adrenaline underscore VT, if you're from Vermont, shout out to Bernie. Uh, he asks, any updates on if Ally will be included in the rankings? Like I said in the piece before the Q&A, uh, we're still under internal delegations not delegations, deliberations, vocabulary. Um, and we're trying to see what the best course of action is. Also adhering to the standards put out by our publishers. In the past, we've been to, with Red Bull um, and the publisher we're going to be with this time. I mean, they have different things that we can or cannot do. So it might not even be a decision we can make or I make. I can't make the decision myself either because I'm one person in a room of many when it comes to like PG, PG stats, all that. Um, and so, yeah, this hasn't been decided, it's TBD, but I will say that we're trying to act in the best interests of not PG Stats or PG uh, or Nintendo or anybody, but like simply like the, the rankings themselves. So we're trying to do our best to solve um, for that. And you'll see news of that as soon as we have it ready. But thank you for asking. Uh, Banco SSB, will there be videos with, the, with narration for this PGR? <coughs> Let's see. <clears throat> do I spoil it? Do I say it? Um, <clears throat> narration. So story time, but narration. Um, uh, this this PGR, I don't think it'll have it. I don't. Th I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it. I'll leave. I'll leave it subtle. But I will say that uh, we did stop narrations at around V four. I think that's when Cud stepped in from Japan. And uh, narration in the past was written by me. Literally, I was the script writer. And if you ever hated the narration, it's because I was doing it um, and just me. So corny, one-liner, stuff like that. I mean, I was I was trying to make the best of a situation where I was trying to just like make this content. Um, and I was vastly just like, not necessarily inexperienced, but I like bit off more than I can chew. Uh, narration in the past, we've had, I think D1 and Alpharad and Esam do it. Um, we started to see that like a lot of the times YouTube views would be trumped by Reddit copy pasta or not copy pasta, copy paste. So it kind of like hampered the whole effect. And then 
you know, the video, like we had to balance, like how much can we dedicate to the video in terms of resources and how much is it going to actually like pay in return? Uh, and the answer was, uh, it was very negligible. So we all together took out that, um, I think narration is fun, but maybe not for us right now. And if people want to take and narrate themselves, like for later documentaries, I mean, by all means. Um, but for this one, I don't know, probably not, maybe, maybe not. Probably, probably not. <coughs> Let's see. Um, hmm. Other questions that I miss any? Uh, Ultra Potato Gaming, this is one of the ones that slipped by me. Um, with Ally being potentially dismissed from the PGR, will his wins against other players affect the rest of the rest of the PGR? I'm guessing that was one too many rests. Um, but yes, as stated in the tweet announcement that we so eloquently made as the premier stats org for the community, I'm being facetious, but... Um, it read that in the event that a player is omitted from the rankings, sets against that player will still count in the ranking algorithm. So essentially what would happen is, like we noted in the language, uh, an omission would be literally that. Not removing from the actual algorithm and the database and all that, but omitting in a sense and not featuring them. So for everyone that beat Ally or lost against Ally, that will still be in. And those sets and all that will factor into their score and then of course like he won pound so that's like a big deal for like everybody that beat him or everybody that lost against him as he's like you know undeniably one of the top scoring players um but regardless the omission in any capacity would never take away from like the actual data points because then that's i mean that that just that just kind of destroys everything um but an actual feature since this is a hall of fame in a sense and it does um you know, feature players of like a pretty high standard uh, conduct wise, it also kind of plays into that. So if they're not featured in it, um, they're not featured, but they're still included in the actual calculation. Similar precedent was, or not precedent, but a precedent that was set by Melee It On Me, uh, which we are now a part of, was Mafia in one of the SS, SSBM ranks. Uh, player New England involved in. A situation that I, I personally can't recall, but uh, Mafia was a player, I think a Peach main. Uh, he was omitted from the rankings, and uh, that was that. He wasn't not counted within what they did for all their balloting, but he was omitted from being featured as a number and a player and a card and his whole bio. Um, so it would be in that sort of capacity, not anything having to do with data. Um, so thank you for that question. Let's see. Um, all right so any final questions i think i'll take two more we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and close out um it's been a solo show so i appreciate anyone that's hung in <clears throat> or stuck around um it's been uh, just personally off the record it's been it's been a pretty crazy season and as someone who just finished their first year of teaching as a teacher um shout out to schools <laughs> um it, it was a lot to sort of sort you know be looking at the scene, participating in it, and then also being in the first full time job that I've had. Uh, not going to speak for practical tasks, but similarly, you know, other people on the team have new things going on in real life. So it's been a lot to handle, a lot to juggle. But I do thank everybody on the team and everybody that's helped down the PG Stats Discord as community members and contributors because it kind of beats the monotony of everyday life. Um, but I think this first PGR is going to be something special, and I hope everybody enjoys it. Let's see if anyone's got any questions after that. Nope, there is not. Um, let's see, can I ask myself a question? Actually, Pepe XPD still, still wants to go at it, so let's see what he's got. He says, uh, so for instance, if you get first place at Genesis, you get over 50% of the points. How do you guys divide them? Um, that's that's more of a practical test question. It's not so cut and dry. It's not so much that they get the points. It just means that those sets and those place, well, outplacements rather, um, are evaluated on that um, standard. Like all the all the placings and and, and all the sets that were were at Genesis are affected by the value that they had, um, and that pretty much just goes into like. 
uh, what's the word? It goes into sort of... It sort of takes away or adds to the actual weight, the weightiness, sort of like the meatiness of those wins and those outplacements, which is what we're trying to do because you should not compare first at Genesis to first at, uh, I don't know, it's, I don't want to drag any of these events, but first at Genesis compared to first at Gatorland Spring 2019, an actual free event at my old university, University of Florida that anybody can enter. Um, I think Dyer won that, but I was a C tier and you're not going to compare what you did at a C tier to an S tier. So it'll be evaluated on those bases, Cs, um, and it's obviously tweaked. So it's not like out of control, but what really, really matters will be those head to heads and outplacements, outplacements as we put before, and we're going to put an FAQ um, are what we're looking at compared to raw placements. Raw placements don't really mean anything because DQs, uh, upsets, everything else. So outplacings are where we're going to focus the brunt of the placement value. And that pretty much says if you're in an event where Tweak, Nairo, MKLeo, Salem, all these people are present and you outplace them, that means that they must have done, you know, relatively uh worse than you and you outplace them that's a big deal nobody just outplaces them that differential is what's valued over you just having ninth because like ninth depending on your path depending on who's behind you like it doesn't really count for much um is what we found through the algorithm uh all right we have kirby rocket asking a question saying my question is Actually, how do you think I should handle ally drama across the board for Smash Broadcast? I'm trying to find a standard for every broadcaster to follow. Um, no worries if you pasted this question again. I just didn't see it. Uh, broadcast. I'm, I'm guessing either you're a chat mod or maybe you're a stream runner or a streamer yourself. Um, <clears throat> as a standard to sort of handle, handle it, uh, first of all, it, it's not... I wouldn't call it drama. Drama, you know, it's the it's the layman's term, and I get where you're coming from, but uh, I think people are just going to react and be very upset on one side or the other. Similarly, for you know what's going to happen with the PGR or not, <coughs> people are going to react and state their reactions for everyone to read. Um, so, I think on broadcasts, uh, I don't think that just saying their names the situation should result in a ban or a timeout um, i would just moderate it to make sure that the standard is followed that nobody is made uncomfortable and that's very broad but of course like if the standards revolve around people's safety and comfort in the chat and the tournament the event the broadcast then if anything interrupts that or suggests to impede that then that's that's an offense in my opinion um it's pretty impossible during situations like these to unilaterally shut down those sort of things. I mean, even in the PG stats discord people, when it was this and when it was other things in the past that have happened, um, it becomes topic of discussion naturally. So <clears throat> in the general section in the chat um, or in the discord, you know, people are talking about, you know, maybe this tournament's happening, this whatever, and then a situation like that occurs and then people are discussing its components and that's allowed but as soon as someone comes in and they're like, yeah, you should all die because you think this or you should all this because of that. Then it's like, OK, but all right, let's let's bring it back. We're just talking about it um, because it is part of the community and to ignore it would to be uh, dismissing a large component of what everyone's feeling and everyone's facing. Um, so, yeah, I think for broadcast, there should be a standard. If anyone's made to feel uncomfortable, then it's just like an immediate like, hey, watch it. And then a warning. And then that's that. Um, <laughs> which Kirby Rocket follows up with, of course. But at the end of the day, chat will blow up the moment people talk about him as shown. This weekend with Albion, for some reason, you've seen how issues like these go with uh, Hyuga for a solid months or so. Um, yeah, I mean, that was a that was a big issue too. And that, that actually ties into more of like the climate of not only social media, but live broadcasts. And aside from subscriber mode or sub only or whatever, um, it's an unfortunate reality that we deal with in the community across all these sports, especially when like anyone from a marginalized group is on stream, chat goes crazy, makes derogatory comments, um, you know, really being vigilant is the best I can say. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, 
I think I think that can help you, Kirby Rocket. Anything besides that, I mean, use your best judgment. I don't think people can necessarily fault you for trying to keep the peace, but understand that everybody's raw with emotion, so that's pretty much the the best you can sort of hope for. Um, so yeah, I think that unless another question pops in super super quick, I think that'll be the final bit to today's recap. Again, thank you for keeping up. Um, pretty short segments, but also it's just me, so I wanted to keep it pretty tidy for everybody. Hopefully within the Q&A section, you found some gems that you could uh, sort of share or maybe refer to someone later if they're curious. I'd say for now, uh, sit tight. We're trying to work to make sure everything is the way it needs to be for announcements and everything. We never try to leave the community hanging or you know, want to delay anything that shouldn't be delayed. I mean, if we're up to me, it would be out right now. The entirety, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a presentation, it's a celebration. So we got to do the whole, you know, day by day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but for what it's worth, uh, if you have any questions, I'm always available on Twitter at pg underscore soir, uh, pg stats themselves, which I also run uh, at the pg stats on Twitter, and then anything else, just make sure you stay tuned to uh, Twitter, Reddit, maybe some Facebook groups. It's a great time for discussion. And one tip I will say for up and coming casters, uh, TOs even, and most of all content creators, I would start keeping an eye out now and, uh, maybe potentially like someone mentioned in the chat earlier, like a character breakdown sort of thing. Um, things that we historically don't do. Uh, if you want to dig into that information and make content on it, by all means. But what I would suggest is preparing your layouts, preparing your 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 sort of templates, whatever that you want to do now, so that when it comes out, you can quickly sort of like insert it and then get it out as concurrently as possible. Um, even when people are filling out X factors in the coming weeks, that whole survey, people stream what they think and they're like rating all these people and chat's going crazy and people rate with the chat. I mean. We'll probably do it for the next Smash Center, I think, because X Factor should be out by then. And uh, it's great content. So think of this as an opportunity not only for you know your local player or even yourself to be celebrated in case you make it to the PGR, but also it's like a pretty hot time. And I've never really had a chance to describe what that is in this sort of fashion because Smash Center didn't exist in past PGRs. But I will say that like Twitter is right here when it comes to the current sort of dynamic with like whatever Pokemon news, any other news, Sam Samurai Showdown, which I keep seeing. It's gonna go up to like here. I'm above the screen, I know. But it's gonna go to like everything and anything under the under the sun. People hyped, people upset, people excited, people demoralized, people making anime arcs and goals for the next season, people quitting the game. I mean it's it's kind of funny and kind of horrible at the same time. Um, but I want to say it's like 90, 10, awesome, bad. Um, don't let the vocal minority fool you. Um, you know, just sort of get involved, get involved quick, get involved early. If someone has something that they're going to do, help them out and do it. If one of your players in your region is, uh, ranked, buy them a cake. I don't know. Like have it fun, like tweet, stream, like do as much as you can so that everybody that's talking about it has like more content to consume and then everybody like benefits from that. It also chiefly just helps like everybody on the outside see how much like the community can sort of like make things really, 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 really hot. Um, <laughs> we did that when it was milk versus cereal. I think Mr. R got tweeted out from dictionary.com on their Twitter for that whole milk before cereal, cereal before milk debate. And it literally changed and went trending. And there's like other things that the community does every now and then where it unites behind one thing and it makes it really hype. And that's like, honestly, the PGR. So, you know, stay tuned for any articles. If Kotaku, if ESPN, if Cheddar Esports, which is kind of new, the, you know, we used to have like Yahoo Esports. Uh, if any outlets cover it, um, give it a read, give it a click. You know, I'm not going to tell you to like light and retweet everything on your timeline because, you know, I wouldn't do that either. Um, but just realize that other people looking in are going to see that and potentially make assumptions or judgments based on it. So um, by EVO, we'll have a newly minted top 50 and that top 50 will likely have the majority be at EVO. So rally behind your players, pop off and remember at the end of the day, there's another season. So it's not like it's this is it, right? It's not going to be those 50 forever. A new 50 will come, you know, in the second season or not. 50 new people, but you know what I mean. 
Um, but in any case, I'm going to close it out. I'm talking too much. People are probably like all, all gone now. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close it out. It's been Suar. It's been real. Please tell someone you love them. There's so much going on right now with the summer heat. People go crazy. So don't forget your priorities and don't forget yourself during the whole craziness. Uh, if you have any questions, you know where I am, you know where PG Stats is. Uh, PGR News will come out very soon. And next week with Coney back in the States from Australia, hopefully we'll be doing a live X Factor, I hope. Um, and maybe a giveaway for the episode before the PGR, since I've said that now for episodes 10, 15, and 20. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Um, in any case, uh, we'll see you next time. It'll be be a fun one with Coney back. Uh, so much to still talk about. I hope I did, you know, a great job kind of bringing you to the, to the, current, to the current news. Um, but yeah, have fun on Twitter. Have fun on Smash Reddit. Have fun on uh, the summertime. It's here. The Summer of Smash is starting. We're going to have Evo. We're going to have Smash Con and Shine. Three S tiers in one month. Three. One month. Three. One month. That's gonna be, and I'm gonna just say they're probably S tiers. Like I don't, I don't want to like prescribe anything, but at the same time, historically they've been majors. Evo is definitely gonna be, I don't know. Estimates are in the two, three, maybe four thousand for registration. I, I don't even, I, <laughs> that'd be too much. I know Street Fighter might have gotten almost five when it was announced, but I know that there were like thirty-three percent of it DQ'd. Um, but Shine historically does very well. And SmashCon, please, if you're going to go to SmashCon, let me know. Let Kony know. We can arrange a meetup. Uh, that's my favorite event. I'll be going. And it's more than just a tournament. Don't forget that. So three S tiers in August. Then school starts. Then the winner of Smash the Drought. But yeah, it's going to be a good one. Have fun with it. Reach out to us if you need anything. But otherwise, um, yeah, just have a good night. and Take it easy.